Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing something altogether different. We are inland, as you might tell by the forest around me. Uh, I'm in a place called Offerton near Manchester. The reason I'm here, one, is because I was dropping my wife at Manchester Airport. She's off on a holiday. And two, it's because it's recommended as a very good spot for Carboniferous plant fossils. Those who don't know the Carboniferous is about 350 million years ago. Uh, and large tropical rainforests cover most of Europe, the UK, and North America. And it's these tropical rainforests that give rise to the large coal deposits, which end up in turn driving the Industrial Revolution across most of the West. So we're here today to have a look. I've never been before, uh, so it'll be a bit of an adventure, uh, and we'll see what we can find. I'll catch up with you when we're down there. It's a beautiful little bit of forest down here and uh, I don't know if you can hear between me walking around there's a little river down to the left, the river Goit or some funky English pronunciation that I have not yet heard. Uh, but absolutely majestic little area. Very, very different to the coast. I do have to say though, uh, this is a spectacular little sight. I love the uh, Yorkshire coast for its scenery, uh, but in the middle of a forest next to a little babbling brook, uh, what a beautiful little place. Uh, the first sort of rock exposures and they look what I would expect. Uh, there are several sections of dark black material, uh, dark black to brown being the organic uh, remains. You see it on the coast with the chunks of wood, they all tend to be black. Here, likewise, the organics are going to be dark black and woody uh, as the sort of the coal. And you can see some big old chunks of uh, carbonized wood in the middle of this and some of the little leaves. So we're just searching along these little edges that have all collapsed. Uh, I don't have any idea of the level of protection. I don't believe it's a triple SI. Um, but just to prevent erosion and damage to the site too much, all I'm going to do is look through the loose material. And you don't have to do very much, so uh, there's a little collapse here. I don't know if someone's been digging in the spot, but you got some nice little leaves preserved in it. And so I've got a chisel. I might split some of these down a little bit later and see if any of these will split nicely along a plane and see if we can find a nice leaf or two to take home. Yeah, plants normally aren't my thing, but there are some really nice little bits in here. Uh, so I think that one might just come as is. A uh, bit of uh, paraloid on top of that that will shine up and look retreat. Yeah, some more rocks just exposed here. I had a quick look at them. Uh, they don't look to have any plant fossils near them, uh, but I'm also a bit wary of jumping into the, uh, the little quiet spot in the corner over there, because that's a bit uh, grim. Obviously the water not getting circulated well. There is something really satisfying about seeing these living ferns next to a riverbank where 350 million year old ferns are washing out. And if you go to the Yorkshire coast, you can find 150 to 180 million year old fossil ferns as well. It's uh, a really beautiful thing and uh, a good chance to just talk about living fossils. Things like ferns and crocodiles and lots of different species that look very similar to their counterparts in the fossil record. Uh, are sometimes described as living fossils just because they look similar. It doesn't mean that they are the same things. They have been evolving constantly in those vast periods of time. Uh, sometimes their morphologies, their appearance is very similar to the fossil record. Uh, and that just means that that shape that uh, is very good at whatever function it's performing. So a plant leaf is very good and they're fairly conserved through the fossil record. But things like crocodiles are very good for ambush hunting. Their morphology, their flat skulls allow them to hunt perfectly well in the water and that's why that shape has survived so long but there's a lot of things that are constantly changing that we may not be able to see as clearly in the fossil record lots of soft tissues their immune their responses their genes all will be constantly changing and evolving in response to changes in the environment so please when you talk about living fossils in the general public just be aware that it's not that they are the same uh, just hit a little pocket of fairly nice stuff so i thought i'd show it to you so we've got what looks like some stems going along there. Always worth double checking each side. Uh, lots of little plant leaves. A 
you can see sort of the diversity in them all. There's some really nice ones in amongst this. And then just some pieces of wood. Yeah, so a little spot that uh, obviously some stuff has come out of, whether this is someone's dug it out, there's definitely footprints that go up the hill that are not mine. Um, or whether this is because a giant tree has fallen on this rock and exposed it, I can't say. Uh, this is the little hole for the minute. I think this might just be about the end of them. I'm gonna to have to sort through all the little bits and pieces. I've got a few nodules just to have a go at. So the nodules here, I believe are phosphatic rather than limestone, like on the Yorkshire coast. Uh, but they do sometimes still preserve things incredibly well. And so on the surface of a few of the nodules, uh, we can see some plant material. Um, but occasionally, and I've seen pictures of them from down in South Yorkshire, uh, you get invertebrates and stuff as well. Um, but I also just want to show, again, when I talk about things like fossil ferns uh, and different species of plants, there's quite a diversity of them here. So you've got this species, uh, I don't know the difference between, and there's some more ferns there, um, which I think might be different to those. There's multiple different species on this block, including a modern plant. Um, so it gives you just an idea that there are quite a lot of things uh, to be found here uh, and I've seen recently someone posted uh, a seed pod uh, as well from here so there's just a huge amount of stuff uh, so I'm just going to sort through this try and split down some of these nodules in case there's anything inside them uh, and if there is anything I will definitely be back to show you uh, what there is so having just sorted through some bits and split a few of those bigger blocks down uh, I've got a few surprises like some of these that were just ram packed with really nice things. Uh, so I've got a bit of a diversity of species now in this. Uh, I'm gonna wrap them all up and lots of bubble wrap and hope they make it back. Uh, these shale blocks, notoriously squishy. Uh, so all full of bubble wrap, just to wrap everything up nice and tight. Or not too tight, but wrap them up nicely. That's gonna wrap us up here at Offerton. I've only really explored this bit and a little bit upstream. Uh, for fossils, but I have to say you didn't have to explore very far. There was plenty of nice little plant fossils in this exposure here uh, and I've got a nice little collection in my bag. Uh, I'm hoping to find a few more Carboniferous sites to explore, maybe a little closer to home in South Yorkshire, uh, but unfortunately despite there being loads and loads of coal mines once upon a time, the vast majority of the spoil heaps that would be useful for looking for fossils are now either buried, built upon, or close in private, and so we need permission to get to them. Uh, but I'll see what I can do, and uh, a lot of that will depend on what you guys think of this video. If there's a lot of enthusiasm for this sort of content, uh, I'll see if I can produce some more for you. And with that, I'd like to give you a big thanks for watching, as always, and uh, I'll catch you in the next hunt.